Welcome back to North Dakota. Surprise! I told you we had lots of surprises coming in, in the near future. Uh, today I cheated. I brought a bunch of stuff to the sandblaster. Saved me a whole bunch of time. Can't hardly see it with the, all the shrink wrap, but I brought a whole bunch of loose parts to get sandblasted. So at least they're 90% cleaned up, if nothing else. I'll have to still fine tune things here and there, I'm sure. But look pretty amazing. We're going to go unload them now. Happy Friday, everybody. Welcome back to North Dakota. Uh, here is the sandblasted up main housing. Uh, we got it put in the shop here this afternoon. Um, so I can continue working on things here. Um, brought in the main pivot point casting part here. Um, the flywheel, and this is the ring that goes on here. And this is the top of the gas tank and the cap. And this pivot point goes on the bottom of that boss. So basically, kind of all the stuff to go along with this casting. Uh, this is going to be the next thing I'm going to kind of focus on here. Um, the first goal is I want to, I think I'm going to seal, the plan is to seal the inside, this is the gas tank, seal the inside of the gas tank, it's all been sandblasted and pretty darn clean, but I will uh, make sure it's perfectly clean, and then uh, I'm going to get some gas tank sealer, and coat that, make a gasket, and then get that seal it put it all together with all the bolts and everything that way when i paint this assembly all the bolts and everything will be painted as one uh, unit and i don't have to worry about nicking up any paint or anything after is kind of the plan there um, i will have to get this is where the Gas comes out of the gas tank. Of course, this housing is laying outside right now. Normally, it stands vertically, right? This is where your engine mounts here and your transmission assembly mounts on the back side there. Um, so this is where the gas comes out. Uh, I can actually show you here. Where did I put that? So this is the assembly. Uh, so this goes in there. And then you got your shutoff here and a little strainer sediment bowl. And then you can drain out the bottom there. And then you got a gas line that goes to your carburetor from there. So the old original one pipe is broken off in there. So we'll have to have a little bit of fun getting that out of there and clean those threads up. And then this will actually end up going back in here. So I'll probably put that in now too. So it is all painted as one assembly, so I don't have to pipe wrench on the fresh paint. Uh, previous, previous owner, looks like they went through this sediment bowl. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure I'll probably take it all apart again and, and see exactly what they did and make sure they did it right and everything. Uh, I'd hate to get it all painted and then discover it's not done correctly. Um... Um, what else? So I got the, so then once the plan is here, kind of talking in circles, plan is uh, I'm going to try to mount this casting to the engine stand is my thought uh, up vertically so that I can work on it on the stand and then potentially paint it all right on the stand as well is kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, it's a pretty heavy deal. But I think it should be all right. It's still, I'll have to look up the how much it weighs. And it tells you how much all the different castings weigh in the parts manual. I'll have to look that up here. I'll, I'll edit it in on the video here when I put this video together, what it weighs. But I know it's less than what the engine stand is rated for. So it should be all right. But uh, so I'm thinking, mount this something like that. And then uh, it should give me, like I said, pretty good access to paint everything as one big assembly. We'll see. 
it'll have to sit upright because the tank is too tall to actually rotate it, it would hit on the bottom. But that's all right, because I'd want it upright anyway. So it's a thought. I'll probably come out here tomorrow and and look at that a little bit farther and, and see if I like that idea. Uh, maybe rig it up to the, the chain hoist up above and, and uh, give that a go. Because then, okay, so once, if that'll work, whatever, let's assume it does, get all the gas tank sealed up, put the cap on, new gasket, everything, that'll be done. Uh, the next step would be to clean up these main pivot point bosses and pins, and I want to test fit all that and get those pins all working nice and smoothly like they should because, as you know, we had to press them out of there, so things are all kinds of gummed up. But I don't think it's going to take too terribly much to clean these up. Like we said previously, that they're actually in a lot better shape than what we were expecting. We thought they'd be all rusted and pitted and galled up, but they everything actually looks pretty nice. It shouldn't take a, a ton of cleaning to to get everything working like it should. And like I said, I gotta once these are cleaned up, I gotta inspect all of those grease. If there is any grease channels in there, because we might, if it's like it looks and there's not a hidden passage in there, I might end up cutting some grease screws or something in these pins so they're more adequately lubricated. But we'll get everything cleaned up and we'll go from there first. And then once that is done and dry fit, test fit it on there, everything is good there. We'll just keep working our way back. Uh, we'll get the main pipe, uh, everything cleaned up there, all these bosses cleaned up and all this cleaned up, the flange and everything, and make sure that that all fits good. There's no excess wear in that. I don't know if we're as tight as it was, they're getting that was stuck, we had to press it apart. Uh, if you've been following along on the videos, if not, go back and watch a couple videos back. You'll see us pressing that apart. Um, so I don't expect that to be worn out or anything. Uh, but if it is, we'll have to address that at that point. But uh, get that all cleaned up. Hopefully, you know, that'll be fairly easy to, to keep progress going along here. And then after that, probably move on to kind of keep working our way back on the tractor and get all the, the rear axle and the sulky parts cleaned up and kind of get this thing back on its feet a little bit, so to speak. Um, some of it will depend on how the season is going here as far as weather-wise. If by some chance the weather does turn nice again here and I get, uh, like say, this housing cleaned up and that housing cleaned up and whatever, a, a batch of stuff together ready for paint and the weather cooperates, I would love to get one more batch of stuff painted here this year, but my hope for that is kind of running thin because we're already, what is it, August 2 today, and it's been pretty darn cool, and we're definitely in the fall weather, and I I don't know if we're going to get any more nice enough days, at least for painting outside type of thing. Uh, I got other options as far as bringing things into work, to paint in the paint booth there but that's a whole nother hassle then trying to transport this stuff there and we'll see what happens we'll play it by ear uh the worst case scenario we'll just get everything in the spring i'll just keep getting everything dry fit and everything ready to go so it's 100 percent ready when it you know painting weather does come back around in the spring it would be nice to get things painted here yet this fall because it's all bare cast and you know how that's going to go it's going to just the longer you wait the more it's going to rust and you're going to have to keep cleaning things up even since this was sandblasted last last week yeah last week that uh it's already starting to get a little surface rust here and there which is no big deal i'll i'll clean it up again i knew it was going to happen but uh, it's still having these parts sandblasted saved me a ton of work I mean, it's it's in, instead of completely cleaning everything up, you're just kind of going over and doctoring up where it's starting to surface rust a little bit. 
Um, still sand in the corners. I haven't even cleaned it out yet. We, like I said, we just literally got it in the shop here this afternoon. So. It is kind of interesting. There was remnants of this white coating in these. You can see a little bit down in that corner there yet. Um, where there was like a white coating inside these toolboxes. So I almost wonder if you can see some up in this corner too, maybe. I almost wonder if they if they painted these inside of these toolboxes like a white or a cream colored. Um, so I'm half tempted to, to possibly do that again just because instead of painting everything green. But I don't know. I don't know if I'll do that or not. But it was definitely, you can see that that coating. It was like what was inside the gas tank. So maybe they just coated the inside of all those housings with that whatever type of coating that was just to protect it. You know, they, I don't know, maybe they even dunked the whole casting in something and then painted over it or something. But I didn't, well, it was the outside, there wasn't paint or anything, but I didn't find any remnants of that white on anything on the outside. It was just, like I said, inside there, inside there, inside of this housing. Again, you can kind of see, it'll focus in there a little bit remnants of it down in the bottom there so you want to clean these up that's where your axle for your for your drive wheels get them all polished up i'll probably end up taking the serial number tag off very carefully uh, so i can clean and get paint behind there and then re your little blind drive rivets re-rivet it on that's kind of what i'm thinking i'm going to do I almost hate to disturb it and take it off, but I like to get so it doesn't, you know, if I just paint around it, it potentially it's going to rust behind it, you know, every time moisture gets back in there, but we'll see. Um, I think that's about it for now. Like I said, it's going to be a busy winter. I got lots to work on now. Um, I got more things than time at the moment. We got the flywheel there. Um, there'll be some exciting, potentially exciting news on the clutch stuff coming up in the near future. I'm going to keep that, uh, under wraps for now until I for sure know more, but I'll just say I got potentially some good news there. Um, yeah, we got all kinds of work. We got governor to go through. We got toolbox lids to redo. We got... There's all kinds of fasteners and hardware in here and all kinds of fun stuff. And we still got those engine parts to do. We got months and months worth of work to do. We got engine, or uh, excuse me, uh, drive lugs. We got to make one of them and get the other wheels cleaned up. We got to make road bands for the drive wheels yet. Um, all kinds of stuff. No shortage of work. Now that I got all the parts out here, we got lots to work on. So, all right. That's probably enough for one night here. I'll uh, probably catch you guys in the morning. See you later. Happy Saturday. So, I've been out here this afternoon, starting to work on this main housing a little bit. I got the old broken off pipe out of there, and those threads cleaned up as best as they're going to be. Uh, dry fit those pipes in, took this apart. I'm glad I took this all apart because the way they had it, it wasn't very good. The pipe dope was not the best and they had it gooped up everywhere. So I got this all apart. Uh, I'll probably have to figure out some new seals for the shutoff. You know, the, the actual seats need to be cleaned up a little bit. Um, got this all, you know, roughly cleaned up. I uh, got this apart there again. They just had a this real thin paper gasket made, and it was all doped up. Um, I think it'll be better if I cut a nice little rubber gasket to fit up on the top there, and then pipe dope or nothing on it to seal it. The rubber gasket will will seal that up. So that goes in there like that. 
and then your gas line like I said comes out of there you got your petcock to drain your fuel bowl on the bottom and your shutoff so yeah I'm gonna probably table this for now because this could always get done in the dead of cold winter um, I probably won't paint this. I'll probably leave that all nice and shining up, polished up brass. Just paint this part of it. Like I said, I wanted to get this part in to paint that uh, with the housing. I'll have to take this back apart and put some pipe dope on those threads to make sure those are sealed up well. But yeah, I think I'm pretty much happy with that for now. I'll come, like I said, we'll table that and come back to that a little bit later. Uh, I think I'm going to see if my engine stand idea will work now. I got the uh, gas tank sealant ordered up last night. So hopefully, like next week sometime, that will be here. Um, I looked up this casting last night in the book, too, and it was about, it's about 350 pounds, just this piece of casting. So that's way less than... You know, it's a 2,000 pound engine stand, so there shouldn't be any problem uh, hanging it on there. Uh, so I think, yeah, I think I'll try to tackle that here next, maybe. Okay, I got the engine stand mount mounted on the housing. Hooked up to the chain hoist here. Uh, let's see if we can get her tipped up and put on the stand here, see if it's going to work. Well, that worked pretty good. Got her up on the engine stand. I think that'll, I think it'll be just fine. It'll actually be pretty handy. Like I said, I'll be able to paint it right on the stand this way. Uh, I'll be able to dry fit this main pivot point now. Get that all figured out. Um, yeah. Uh, I still got it's low enough. All right, I got access. I can get in here and, and paint the, the gas tank liner on inside there without any issues. Um, kind of interesting. There is bushings in these pivots, but I don't think they're they're not brass or anything. So that's oh, they're showing, but they're not brass or anything. So that's kind of kind of strange actually. I don't know why they would push that with a sleeve of steel. I'm guessing is what that is. I don't know. So yeah, I think I'll maybe clean up some pins and bores now and work on getting that. See if we can get that fit. Look at that. The pins are cleaned up. They actually fit in the bores like they're supposed to. They're actually just a tiny bit loose. <laughs> There's a lot of... I just I mean, roughly cleaned them up. I haven't even really final cleaned anything yet. Same story. This thing will actually go together nicely now. Um, still got to figure out and clean out all the grease passages and figure out what's going on there. Um, we got the stub axles, shafts, somewhat cleaned up. Uh, kind of hit some of the other you know, parts of the casting here with the white wheel a little bit as long as I was at it. Clean up some of the little bit of rust that was already starting. But yeah, we're making, making some good progress. It's amazing how things work when you know, things are clean. <laughs> got these... Pivot pins roughly cleaned up as well and fit into the pivot casting here. So I'm going to go over how this grease system works and explain how I think this one might have been put together upside down. So we'll start with the top. So these pins are, there should be a pin through here that that's what holds this pin in the casting solid. Um, and then the tractor actually pivots on the center section only. 
okay uh, on the top there's a grease cup that threads into here that is drilled down to this hole so your grease comes out and lubes your your pivot point here right that all makes sense okay it is a little bit strange in my opinion why the grease hole is way up on the top like that you would think wouldn't it make more sense for that hole to be in the center of the bore so the grease oozes its way out kind of evenly in that whole bore and or have a grease little grease channel of some sort to kind of you know get that grease smeared out the product you know around the whole whole pivot point there you know maybe there's something i don't know there maybe this is the normal way to do it but it seemed kind of strange anyway so uh, possibly uh, i might put a little you know mill in a little tiny grease groove there just to, to help uh, distribute that grease a little bit better let me know what you think about that maybe i'm way off base but they actually it's amazing how when everything is cleaned up the pins actually slip in there like they should and granted these aren't final cleaned up or nothing yet either they're just kind of just enough so i could see what was going on okay so that's how the grease in the top uh this actually goes this way though this hole here goes towards the back of the tractor for that pivot uh, pulley for the throttle cable anyway okay so the bottom pivot pin same story there should be a, a cross pin through here to hold that solid and it tractor pivots on this section um so down here because there's no room because there's linkages and stuff here the grease cup is on the side instead of the top which okay so you turn your grease cup it goes into that hole and that uh that pin when it was made was come on well you probably won't be able to see down inside there but this actually has been yeah again you can't probably see it on camera but this was bored through down into this hole so these are connected and then it was plugged and flushed so you can't tell that anymore so it allows the grease to go in, down, and then back out this bore to lube this. So again, that makes sense, with the exception of, well, there again, why wouldn't that hole have been in the center of this bore to more uh, uniformly grease it? Whatever, okay, same story. Maybe put a grease, a little bit of a grease groove in there just to help lubricate things better, but so this bottom pin was the one that was really hard to get out, really stuck. The top one was too, but not so bad. I th almost think, I'll have to go back at the video, I think we made a note of which, where this hole was, if it was on the top or the bottom when we removed it. I'll have to go back and watch my, my footage again. Um, and I could be wrong here, but I almost think, okay, so, so when this is in, the right way here with the with the hole lined up uh you know grease in there this is flush here and sticking out a little bit on the bottom okay i note that because if you look at this pin come on, it is worn or whatever weathered on that end not on that end so i'm thinking they had this pin in upside down to be honest with you i said i have to, have to go back to see if we made a note of that when we, when we took it apart i think we did come on 
But if that's the case, and they put it in upside down, with that bore lined up like it should be, that bottom weathered part sticks out there. Top is flush because there's no weathered there. There's no way for that grease to get to this hole if the paint is put in upside down because the grease hole is only connects these two. So I kind of think this was put together wrong. <laughs> Maybe even from the factory, who knows how long it's been like that. It could very well could have been a part at some point in its life, possibly when this was repaired. But either way, it's been together wrong for a significant amount of time because it was stuck in there good. And obviously this hasn't been a part any time in recent history. So I think I kind of solved, potentially solved, why that pin was so stuck. It was, it was put together wrong. Got to understand how the grease channels work. Make sure things are put together right because yeah, it's got to be, it's got to be put together this way for it to, for the grease to be able to get from there to there. <laughs> so I found that kind of interesting. Let me know what you think about that. But uh, it's about supper time here. It's going on seven o'clock. Um, I think I'll clean up here a little bit, regroup, and call it a night. And maybe come out tomorrow with the goal of maybe trying to get this put on to this casting and see how well everything pivots and fits now that things are somewhat cleaned up. Should fit a whole lot better, that's for sure. So, all right. Catch you guys tomorrow. Welcome back. Sunday afternoon, <clears throat> excuse me, I checked back my videos, see it, it's handy to film this whole process, you can go back and check things, sure enough, this pin when we took it apart, it was upside down, the two holes were on the bottom, so this pin had been put together wrong for who knows how many years, a significant amount of time, so that's kind of interesting, it explains another mystery solved. I better catch you up. I haven't been doing a very good job of documenting what I've been doing here today. It's almost time to quit here. Oh, I got the pivot point pins all roughly cleaned up and fit and got this back on the main casting just to see how everything fits. Of course it's dry, so it's squeaky. But it uh, pivots nice and smoothly like it should. Um, there's just a tiny little bit of play in there like you would expect. Nothing I'm concerned about. Uh, so I'm calling that pretty much good for now. Uh, there's these pins that go through the pins that hold them in place. Um, I'll probably remake those pins. Actually, probably ream these holes up to the next size bigger and make the appropriate sized pins because they're a little on the loose side and they're crusty anyway so they should be remade pretty rusty uh, same with down here um i rounded up a few more parts out of the pile of sandblasted stuff out in the barn um the linkages here i have to fit dry fit here and here yet uh, i want to make sure everything works there the way it should um, and make sure I'm happy with it as far as if anything needs to be uh, done with them now at this point before paint. Um, basically, I'm, like I said, I'm trying to focus on everything to do with these castings here so I can try to get some paint on them yet. Um, I got the bore inside here. Uh, Roughly cleaned out, still needs a little bit of fine tuning yet, but most of the rust and crust is, is gone. It actually cleaned up pretty darn nice, considering how badly it was stuck. There's a little bit of pitting and whatnot in there, but that's just more spots for the grease to hold. Some of these are actually just casting flaws. Um, but you can, I don't know if you can pick them up on the camera or not, but you can actually still see the machining marks in there, so it's not worn by any means so I don't expect it to be loose I haven't test fitted it test fitted it yet um, 
Got this piece here. Got the little wear ring somewhat cleaned up. It goes inside there. Uh, I just finished up cleaning up the, the end of the main pipe here. Uh, at least give it the first cleaning so I can, before I call it a day here, I want to try to put this in that bore to see how it fits. Um, basically so I can kind of plan accordingly. If that all goes, looks good, then I can somewhat get a game plan going as far as what else I need to do as far as dry fitting this stuff, uh, timeline wise, uh, to kind of roughly see if paint is going to happen here this fall. Uh, Cause it's, it's actually going pretty smoothly here. Uh, as far as once I get the liner uh, and the gasket cut and the top put back on, the top end will basically be good to go. I want to probably take off the serial number tag, clean up behind there yet. Uh, a little bit more final cleaning on that main housing and that's pretty much ready to go. Uh, I got to dope up these yet, like I said earlier. Um, and then this casting here will be pretty much ready to paint too. A um, little bit of fine-tuned cleaning and uh, whatnot, grease cup. I gotta yeah figure out grease cups yet. Grease cup. Um, there's a few little monkey business things to have to do, but it's pretty well getting close to paint. So yeah, I'll uh, see if we can get this piece dry fitted here. Check back with you. There, what do you think of that? It's starting to look like a tractor again. Um. Everything fits pretty darn good. Um, this, uh, I can't do it here with one hand, but it, it rotates in there like it should. Um, there is a little bit of, well, I don't know if I'll be able to do it here. Well, Yeah, I'll probably have to get it bolted together before I can really show you, but there's a little bit of up and down play, which to be it's to be expected from you know riding around. It's probably a little bit worn that way. And it might have been that sloppy from new. I don't even know how tight a tolerance that really would have been. There really isn't any uh discernible play side to side. Like I said, there's a little bit up and down wise on that joint. Oh, but I just kind of wanted to get that together here tonight so I can kind of know, know what I had and kind of think about how I want to tackle all this, even as far as paint. It's tricky because obviously I've been trying to paint as much in separate pieces as I can uh, at the same time putting assemblies together and painting things as much together as I can uh, so I don't have so a minimal touch-up when all is said and done basically um, so what I'll probably do at this point when I'm thinking I'll paint this main housing separate take this back apart paint this piece separate uh, but this as far as this section goes these pieces are going to have to go on there at this point because they are very snug fit on the pipe. Let's see, it actually go this way down the bottom. I don't know if I can even get them on to show you. Well, anyway. Now I got stuck. Come on. Actually, I think it goes this way if I remember right. But anyway, they go on there fairly snug. So there ain't no way you're going to get them on 
once things are painted without mess, completely messing up your paint. So I'll probably have to put a little bit of primer down just to protect the bare metal a little bit. Slide them on, locate them, dry fit everything as far as all the sulky goes. And then once I know where they're going to be, then paint that as an assembly. Draw bar could go on after the fact because that's just U-bolts over the top. Um, I haven't got that in here yet. Um, and the sulky parts could all get pretty much painted separate. There again, they're not in here. All that stuff's still out in the pile of sandblasted pallet parts, out, pallet full of parts out in the barn. Um, but yeah, it's I'm just kind of still, even as I'm videoing here, kind of thinking, thinking about my process. But yeah, I think. I feel like I keep repeating myself, and I probably still am. But if I get the top tank sealed, tank sealed, gasket cut, top tank on, a little more dry fitting and clean up, that casting will be ready, this casting will be ready, and with a little bit of dry fitting, this tube will be ready, and potentially sulky parts will be ready. So that would be enough to get a batch full of, a batch's worth of paint done so that's kind of the goal but even still you're still looking at at the rate I work on things here and usually just on the weekends usually after work I don't feel like coming out here and doing anything usually it's just on the weekends that I get stuff done you're still looking at uh, you know realistically a couple of weeks worth of work to get all these loose ends of things tied up before I'm ready for paint, and a couple of weeks puts us in the middle of October, and that's not looking too good for paint-wise, weather-wise. So I'm, if I really want to get paint laid, I might have to start coming out here after work for a little bit, working on an hour or two in the evenings to try to get things ready. I don't know. We'll see. It's a lot of work, and, you know, it is just a hobby. I'm not you know, getting paid for any of this, so uh, there's no real reason I have to rush it besides getting paint on so things don't rust. So I don't know. I feel like I'm babbling here, so I'm gonna call it a call it a week. Call this the end of the video. Try to edit the stuff together maybe tonight and get another video put up just to keep you guys all updated. A few of these that actually are watching this. Uh, so yeah, if you have any suggestions and things that I've been talking about and doing by all means let me know comments are always appreciated welcome um yeah another fun fun filled weekend all right thanks for watching everybody